Hello? Hi, may I please speak to Steve? Who's calling? Um, my name is, he doesn't actually know me. I'm a fan of Sweet. Oh, yeah, who's speaking to him? Oh, okay, I hope it's not a bad time or anything. Um, I, no, as long as you don't want too much time. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, well, actually, um, first of all, I'm a member of Give Us a Wink. Yeah. And, um, I wanted to thank you. Um, I was one of the ones who ordered the book. Are oh. you ready, Steve? And you autographed it for me, and it's number 15. Yeah. Yeah, and I want to yeah, thank I you. I the name, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's good, yeah. Well, um, I did want to thank you for it. I have to say that the book was very well written. You did an excellent job. Thank you. Yes, and, um... I know the computer ate some of it at one point. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, about 200... Pa no, a, uh, a lot of pages went missing. And when I told... Uh, when I gave it to David Passion to read... Uh -huh. he was doing he he got all the type together in the computer and he said why didn't you mention this last and this and this i said i have he said no you haven't <laughs> oh god so i had to go back and rewrite tons of it that's hmm. why it took so long oh really well you did an excellent job i have to say you really did i mean i really felt like um you know i was right there in a part of everything that went on with me you know well the way i was trying to, to write it was as if you were sitting across the table from me, you know what I mean? Uh-huh, yeah, well, I have to say, it was really excellently done, I have to say. And, um, well, I, I really have enjoyed Sweet right through all the years, and, you know, starting with Little Willie, and um, uh, my favorite albums are, like, Desolation, Boulevard, and Off the Record. Yeah. Uh-huh, I think those are both excellent CDs. Thank you. Uh-huh, and I have quite a huge um, collection of Sweet CDs, as a matter of fact. And Where else do you live? Um, I live in Rhode Island. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Um, it's about four hours from New York. Yes. Right. Oh, I know where Rhode Island is. I used to live in New York. Right, I know that. I know you used to live in New York, but I, but you have been here. Yeah. Oh, really? Great. What part of Rhode Island? I think I think we did a long time ago. Oh, really? Um, well, are you familiar with like Newport? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Right. I live. Probably about 10 minutes from Newport. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It, it's a nice area. It really is. Um, a lot of ocean and, you know, um, just very beautiful. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I know. It's, it's a beautiful area of country up there. Uh-huh. Yeah, it is. But California's beautiful, too. It has its moments, yeah. <laughs> when the smog's not here. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, actually, I was out there last year in August, and, you know, they do get smog, but it's still a beautiful place, you know? Oh, yeah, no, I love it here. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's great, definitely. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, uh, let's see. I was wondering, um, uh, first of all, I want to tell you that the song, um, Burning, is a song that reminds me of, um, uh, uh, what is it now, um, Led Zeppelin, and they had a song that... It kind of reminds me of it, the immigrant song. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been told that before? Or? Probably. That's probably what inspired it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, was Led Zeppelin one of your biggest influences when you started Sweet? Uh, Zeppelin and Purple. Oh, really? Deep Purple, uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're both great bands. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And have you ever had the opportunity to, to um, tour with them? To no. We've never been in the same place at the same time. Oh, really? Um, oh, yes, what am I talking about? Yeah, we played with Deep Purple, or Deep Purple played with us, um, uh, right in the beginning, with the old with the old singer and uh, bass player. Oh, really? The original bass player and singer, yeah. Oh. Rod Evans and Nick Simper. Right. Um, yeah, we they supported us, believe it or not. Oh, really? Great. <laughs> that must have been an honor. So it was like a warm-up gig for them. They just wanted to play in front of an audience uh -huh. before they started touring America. Right. So that was in, like, 69, I think. Uh-huh. Oh, that's interesting, yeah. And um, another thing I was wondering about, I hope it's okay to ask a couple of questions here. Um, yeah. um, the song Rock and Roll Disgrace, I think it's a great song. It's on the Blockbuster CD, the yeah. um, compilation. Yeah. And um, it's not actually on, as far as I know, any of the albums. It was a B-side. Oh, okay. I was wondering about that. I think it was a B-side to Ballroom Blitz in England. Oh, was it? I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, because um, it's a song that I think is great, and I just was wondering why I'd never heard it previous to having that CD. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. 
well, you know. Um, but um, the most recent CDs I've got is the um, Private Collection and the Platinum Rare. Yeah. Uh-huh, and I think they're both excellent. Of course, I must say, in all sincerity, that the original songs sound the best, you know? I mean, uh, the way they sound when they were completed. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, As opposed to the rough demos. Yeah. Well, a lot of them were just what, what are called monitor mixes. Uh-huh. As you're hearing it in the studio is how it goes down on tape. You don't do anything to it. Uh-huh. You don't add any effects or EQ or anything. And it just comes out the way it comes out. <laughs> and then, but, you know, the real art is when you start mixing it properly. Right. You know, adding effects and, and making it colorful more. Right, exactly. Oh, definitely. Yeah, the mixing does have a lot to do with, um, you know, making the final product sound, you know, its best. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I had heard that, um, I don't know if it's true, that Identity Crisis came out without being mixed. No, that's not true. Oh, okay. I think that was a misquote from Andy. Oh, okay. Because um, he, I think he said somewhere that uh, I wish we'd had more time to mix it, but in something like that, and it got translated into we didn't mix, we didn't have time to mix it. Uh huh. But I'm, I think that's what he said was that you know at the time it, uh, the the budget was so and so, and we were running out of time, so we mixed it quicker than we'd wanted to. Right, I understand, yeah. Because I didn't think a record company would actually release a CD, or in that case a record, um, without it being mixed. No, they wouldn't. Yeah, I didn't I mean, think so. Listen to it and go, we're not releasing that, it's a load of rubbish. <laughs> they have got that much power, actually, to say, no, we're not releasing it, I don't like it. Right. So, no, I mean, they wouldn't They wouldn't put out something that's not really uh, mixed at all. Right, that would make sense. Mm. Um, tell me, do you still get royalties from any of the releases? Because, you know, I, I was skeptical about, like, which ones to get and which ones not to. Um, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Still, oh, that's good. Oh, great. Uh, yeah. Get writing royalties, especially when somebody like uh, Def Leppard does action. Oh, yeah, I've got that as a matter of fact. I think it's the best version I've heard of a, a sweet song. Oh, yeah, I think it's excellent. And um, I also think that um, Vince Neil's version of Set Me Free is really great. No, I've got that, and I've never listened to it. Oh, really? Yeah, because uh, I knew Steve Stevens. And uh, they were doing a gig supporting Van Halen. Uh-huh. And I met Steve, and he sent me a copy of it. And I don't remember if I listened to it or not. Oh, really? Well, it's pretty good. I must say it's worth listening to. Oh, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I mean, it's not sweet, but, you know, hey, no, it's, no. It's, it's actually a more up tempo version, believe it or not. Mm. Yeah. I didn't think you could. <laughs> I didn't think so either, but it, I was really amazed when I heard it. Yeah, oh, okay. it, it's quite good. Um, another thing that um, I was wondering, I know that you said in the book that you had... Um, played with Cheap Trick, that um, I guess they had um, supported you or something yeah. on a tour? Yeah, they supported us and then we supported them. <laughs> oh, it went both ways, I see. Oh yeah, it, they supported us in 76, uh -huh. a couple of gigs, and then we supported them again after Brian had left in 79. Oh, I see. They had a hit and we didn't, so that's... <laughs> well, they haven't had too many hits. They're, yeah. they're a good band, but they really haven't. I mean, The Flame has really been like the biggest hit for them. Yeah. Yeah. And I want you to want me, you know, way right. back in the 70s. Uh-huh. Were they a good band to, uh, you be touring with? Oh, well, they were all right. I mean, we didn't really have that much to do with them. Uh-huh. Right. Well, that's true. That would make sense, actually. Yeah. Do you think that, you probably get this question all the time, but I was curious, do you think there's any chance of fleet reforming or anything like that? There's been a lot of talk about it, but every time it gets close, somebody does something to stop it. Oh, really? Andy. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Andy's, Andy reckons he's got... This is not... Uh, I don't know how to put this. Andy likes people to say yes to him. Uh-huh. So all his bands say yes to him. <laughs> right. In other words, he just wants musicians to do things on his term, and that's it. And that's the end of it, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. I mean, he's not more open-minded about things, you know? Well, that was one of his big problems, actually. Uh, <laughs> one of the big problems of the band was the fact that he was so stubborn about things, and he wanted everything to go his way or not, you know, or... Or not at all. Yeah, right. 
Right. Yeah, that's really a shame, actually. Mm. You know, you think that that's probably the contributing factor to sweet final breakup? Very, yeah, very, very much so. Right. So. Yeah, because I remember in the book you said that um, Andy had walked off the stage or something one night, oh, and that was many, it. many nights. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he was... He was good at doing that. He'd get his little snit and um, they'd leave the stage, leaving me and Brian and Mick to do a drum and bass solo, you know. Oh, really? <laughs> it's very difficult singing with a bass on its own. Yeah, I can imagine, you know, when you have your lead guitarist gone. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a shame, really. Well, that was especially when we were a four-piece. I mean, it wasn't so bad if we had Gary on, uh, Gary Mobley on piano. But, um, no, he used to do it quite frequently. Oh, really? That's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that, um, you know, what he's doing now isn't really that great either because the last I understand, he's released a new CD called Glitz, Blitz, and Hits. Yes. And it's all, like, covers of sweet songs. Yeah, well, believe it or not, Brian's just released an album as well. Right, so. let's go. Yeah, uh -huh. I heard it. Um, I actually haven't heard it yet. I'm in the process of trying to get it. Well, uh, <laughs> Maybe it's not worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Say a word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I think... Been... It sounds like they walked into a room, stuck a mic in the middle of the room and said, go. <laughs> oh, really? You have heard this? Oh, and it's yeah. that bad? Yeah, no, it's not very good. And is Brian's voice still not what it should be? It's He sings slightly flat and it's a lot slower. Oh, really? And there's no urgency in it at all, you know what I'm saying? Oh, really? <laughs> Uh, like a bit molasses -y. <laughs> uh, Yeah, well, you know, I do feel that, um, you know, nothing could compare to the originals, you know? Mm. And I think that, you know, when you do cover versions, you know, it kind of takes away from it, you know? Yeah. You know? Right, well, that's the, I, I'm going to try and get a CD together myself. Oh, really? That would be great. And I'm not going to come, I'm not doing any of the old sweet songs. Oh, it's going to be all new material? Oh, yeah. Oh, great. That sounds excellent. Mm. Yeah, and, and what kind of direction do you think you'd be going in? Um, a bit more mature. Uh-huh. It's, it's a little sweetish in ways, because I did used to write some of the songs, of course. So right. Some of the old sweet style a bit. Right. And, uh, I'll see how it goes. Oh, that'd be great. But I'm doing that at home. Uh-huh. Computer and tape. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, so you're not using any musicians? I'll see. <laughs> uh-huh. Are you, are you still friends with um, David Arkenstone? I don't know what happened to him. Oh, really? He disappeared up north somewhere, and I haven't heard from him since. Oh, really? Oh, that's a shame, yeah. Cause... Oh, it is a shame. I would have formed a band with him if he'd, uh, if he'd been serious and didn't mind doing some sweet songs on stage. Well, I would have definitely got a singer and drummer and a uh, keyboard player and, and formed a band with him because he's a great, he's a good all-around musician. Uh-huh, and how did you discover him? I start, uh, a friend called Stuart Smith phoned me, we're well, not a friend, he's somebody from England. Right. And said, do you want to form a band? And I went, not, not really, but I'll give it a chance. I'll give it a try. Right. And uh, so we... We did actually get a band together, but we didn't really have much material, and uh, we auditioned, you know, like, we all, it, was, it was me and him, so he's the guitarist, and uh, we wanted a keyboard player and drummer and singer, so we went through a few keyboard players who are real prima donnas, and eventually David Arkenstone came along. Ah, oh, I see, yeah. And uh, that's, uh, you know, California's funny. Uh, musicians out here want a deal within six weeks. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. If you haven't got, well, you know, we're going on the road. Have we got a deal? Have we got this? Yeah. <laughs> I think that they probably moved to California with that in mind, yeah. you know? True. And um, things just don't last very long unless you've got a whole bunch of material that's really red hot. And you can get, you've got some money behind you going to the studio with. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so apart from that, it's, it's virtually impossible to get any. You know, but anyway, everyone lost interest. But I phoned Arkenstone up and I said, I think you and me could write some songs. So we wrote three in like five days, which is better than we ever did with Sweet. Wow, incredible. Yeah. And just on little ideas that him and me had, I said, I've got an idea for a title. So he'd go, okay, let's put it together. And, uh, 
and then I and he'd play a. a, a, a have you heard any of it? Um, actually, I haven't. No, oh, okay. Because there's bootlegs flying around. All oh, there. is there? Yeah. Oh boy. Mm. But I still would love to hear it. Yeah, and uh, no, he went in the studio and put five tracks down. Actually, I'm not happy with the lead singer's voice, but it wasn't. It wasn't to promote the. So it was to promote the song, not the not the singer. Oh, I see. Uh huh. And um, so, um, what what kind of direction was that in? It's uh, it was rock and roll. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, because I haven't actually heard them, but um, somebody who has said something about that they sounded like Survivor or Europe. Is that so? I suppose so. Uh huh. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, even though you know you can't get a hold of David, I think that it would still be great if maybe at some point you could like form some sort of a band and maybe do like you know a small scale tour or something. You know. Yeah. Just for fun, you know, it doesn't have to be a big thing, you know, just That's something true. across America. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because, um, you know, I unfortunately have missed out on seeing you live because um, you've never really, you know, played close enough way back then, you know? I think we played Hartford, Connecticut was close. Oh, did you really? Oh, what year was that? 76. Oh, yeah. I, w I was quite young then, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, uh, about. 12 or something then yeah I'm 31 now so yeah. you know um, I guess back then it, it wasn't as easy to get to a concert as it is now I mean you know it was in the middle of winter and it was miserable oh really a lot of snow oh a lot of snow in fact the um, something in Hartford collapsed oh really yeah well, it, it had so much snow on the roof I can't remember what it was it was a school or something but luckily no one was in it Oh, yeah, that's a good thing that nobody was there. Not kidding. No, really. Actually, I was, uh, Brian's got, had two cousins that lived in Hartford. Oh, really? And I was talking to him on the phone, and he said, take a look out the window. <laughs> and I looked to your right, and I went, yes, and there it was, the collapsed something or other. Oh. It was an auditorium or something. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, wow. People were not pleased. I guess not. Yeah. Of course, that was so many years ago, you know, that at this point, you know, you wonder if it's even been rebuilt or what, you know? Probably. Probably. Yeah. I mean, if the roof kind of caved in, if the rest of it's all right, they'll just stick a new roof on it. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Uh, how are you guys doing with all those earthquakes? I mean, I know you had one recently, and oh, I just... that wasn't too bad, though, right? No, there was a five point something or other, and it was, I don't know, about 80 miles away, so I, I didn't even feel it. I was in the car. Oh, really? Well, that's good. I'm glad you didn't. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you felt that one in January of 94. I couldn't really miss it. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was some kind of an earthquake. I mean, we saw all the coverage on TV and everything and thought... It was, it was far worse and far bigger magnitude than they're letting on. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Because um, if it's over a 7 point something or other. What did they say it was? I believe, oh really? That was it they said, yeah. Possibly. No, they said it was a 6.8. Yeah, I thought so. Uh-huh. And, uh, apparently if it's over 7.2, because of the damage that could be uh, a result from a 7.2, the state does not have to pay federal taxes for two years. Oh, really? Seism seismographical places are run by the government. I think they lied. Yeah. I mean, if they could get away with, you know, something like that, then they figure they can. That's sad. Yeah, because, I mean, the damage was just unbelievable. I oh, mean, yeah, it was, you know. I mean, it lifted a freeway 20 foot up in the air. Oh, yeah. Down again. And that's, you know, that's not a 6.8. No. You know, the, the second year, we, the first year we were out here, the Whittier earthquake was a 6.8. One, and that felt worse to me than the uh, Northridge one. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, so they have been a lot bigger. Oh, yeah. Oh. It, depends, it depends how deep they are. It depends on a lot of things. Uh huh. So, um, did you guys have any problems with your house? Did you have to no, like? Every, if it had gone on much longer, it would have been a mess. But because uh, the <clears throat> all the cupboard doors were open and everything was just about to fall out. <laughs> Uh-oh, really? Yeah. So you were very lucky that it just didn't happen. It just you know, missed you. One milk jug broke. Oh, yeah, that's nothing, yeah. Oh, I glued it back together because it's like one of those cockerel ones. Oh, really? <laughs> You're very handy then to have around the house. Well, we, I wanted him to put back together. He's still got bits missing and something, but it's, he's a survivor, you see. 
Right. <laughs> That's great. Do you ever get a chance to go back to England and see your family and friends or anything? Not that often, no. Oh, uh, really? No. Oh, oh well. I have to go to Hawaii. Oh, really? Yeah, I know you, you spoke about it very highly in the book. Oh, I love Hawaii. It's a beautiful place. Oh, really? And how recently have you been there? I haven't been there for a couple of years, actually. Oh, really? But, um... Probably time to get back there. Oh, absolutely. Oh, great. Yeah, well, I haven't actually been, unfortunately. I hope to sometime soon. Well, you're on the wrong side of the country, aren't you? Yes, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I've been, you know, all the way up and down the East Coast. And, you know, actually, I've been to L.A. Yeah. And a, a few times. And um, last year, we actually drove. It took it took five days to get there. Oh, but you had fun though, didn't you? Oh yeah, it was very exciting. You know, um, it, it's kind of safer than taking a plane. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you hear about all these plane crashes. I mean, I still go, but you know, it was exciting to actually see the whole country on the way. You know. Yeah, my, I've got a tennis instructor at the moment, and his daughter is breaking up with um, husband or boyfriend or something uh, on the east coast and so she's flying out here and he is going over there and picking her car up with a trailer and driving it back across the country oh yeah he says he's really looking forward to it he's going to be on his own and he can just do it le leisurely and you know and he said if he sees anyone playing tennis he'll just stop and have a game oh really yeah. <laughs> wow well, that's interesting that's great it keeps you active you know doing tennis and stuff oh, you know absolutely it's a great game Oh, yeah. It, it's good these days, especially, you know, to, you know, do some things to get some good exercise and stuff and yeah. keep healthy, you know. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. I know that, you know, we're also, you know, very conscious of what we eat, you know, yeah. these days that, you know, yeah, I... Right. Yeah, <laughs> Well, you know, like, I, I have to say that, you know, I'm more or less a vegetarian and I, I eat seafood and stuff, yeah. but no red meats and stuff anymore. I mean, you know, all the things that they talk about, you know, yeah. make you very skeptical. Yeah, I know. Yeah, everything in in uh, small doses if you're not careful. I mean, you've got to be careful. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, well, you know, if somebody wants to, that's perfectly fine, you know. Yeah. I, right. So, um, what kind of music are you listening to these days? Any bands that you really like? Um, let's see, who do I like? I like most of them. I like Stone Temple Pilots. Uh-huh. They're good. Uh, uh, I like Live. Live, uh huh, yeah, they're great. Yeah, I like them. They're good. Um, there's a few around that I quite like. Uh huh. I particularly like uh, what's the name? The one that shot himself. Oh, you mean Kurt Cobain? Yeah, I wasn't. I couldn't understand a word he was singing about, so I didn't bother. <laughs> right, Nirvana. Yeah. Nirvana, right. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, they weren't bad. Uh, uh huh. There's another band from Boston that I liked, and I. Uh, Maybe Extreme. Yeah. Oh, yes. What They're good. To them? Uh, I don't know. The last I knew, they released an album uh, back in January. Uh, gee, I can't even think of the name right now. I maybe heard the song once. They were interviewed on Rockline. Are you yeah. familiar with that show? Yeah. Yeah, well, um, I heard them on that. They were interviewed and everything. And they played some of the songs. They weren't bad, but I think that some of their other songs were better. Well, the, the older ones. Yeah, I think so. But um, I haven't heard anything since. And to be honest, they don't even get airplay here anymore. Oh. Yeah, you know. Which is a shame, because usually, you know, if a band is from the general area, they tend yeah, to give it a little extra airplay or something. Right. Yeah, uh huh. No, that's fine. Uh huh. Yeah. Got to support the locals. Uh huh. Yeah, that's true. But you know, I think it's good, you know, to support any band that's really great. You know, no matter where they're from. True, you know. Right. Yeah, but you do get a local bias, of course. Uh huh. Lads and all that. Right, that's true. Yeah, like there's a band called the Goo Goo Dolls. Have you ever heard of them? I've heard of them, but I haven't heard of them. Oh yeah, well they're pretty good actually, yeah. and they're from like um, New York, and so they're getting a lot of airplay here because of it, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, well, you know, I don't know. No, so. I'm gonna have to go. I've got some. I've got some stuff to do before it's dinner time and it's getting that way uh oh okay well I appreciate you you know giving me the chance to talk to you a little bit that was yeah, really nice well keep keep supporting the fan club 
I sure will. Okay. And, um, you know, I hope one day that get to see you live, you know, that would be great. That would be fun. Yeah, definitely. I hope that you get to put together a band or something and do some gigs. That would be excellent. If I can find the people in the same mind as me, that, you know, we're not going for the number one in the charts. We just want to have some fun. Right, exactly. That's what I'd like. But uh, well, we'll see. I've um, I've got a couple of things that I want to get done, and I want to start putting some songs down that I wrote ten years ago. Oh, really? From ten years back? Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. And uh, and see, see if I can find some people that you know don't mind putting the band together, but not so serious. It's nail biting. Right. <laughs> right. Somebody who's just interested, like you say, in having some good fun. You know. Yeah. Right. That sounds very exciting. All right, Steve. Well, I better let you go. I don't want to keep you too long. Okay. Well, it's been nice talking to you. Oh, it's very nice talking to you, too. Thanks so much. Okie doke. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.